Hey everyone, and thanks for stopping by. Today I went ahead and brewed up a Hellas, a Munich Hellas. It was a rebrew from a beer that I brewed up last spring. Um, I enjoyed it so much, I wanted to go ahead and brew it again. And the plan is to take this brew and enter it into a uh, competition next month in March. So I need at least a month in order for it to uh, be brewed up, fermented, lager a bit, and be ready for serving. So uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and show you the recipe and then we'll come back. So here's the recipe. Went ahead and brewed up. Uh, basically for the water additions, the target 50 parts per million of calcium, uh, low on magnesium and sodium, 30 parts per million on sulfate, 85 on the chloride. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, uh, the targets. Uh, the grain bill on this one is uh, about 87% Pilsner, 7% Munich, 2.3% Biscuit Malts, 2.3% Melanoidin, and I used about 100 grams of acidulated malt in order to help bring that pH down for the mash. It wasn't quite enough to get it down to where I wanted it to be. Um, during the mash, it came out to be about 5.36 without any additional acid additions. So I went ahead and added in uh, two milliliters of the uh, phosphoric acid to bring it down to uh, 5.29. So yeah. For this uh, recipe, uh, target is about 20 IBUs. So I only used 75, a little more than 75 grams of the Hallertal Mittelfuhr. And um, for the yeast, Southern German Lager Yeast, WLP 838. Really like what this did for this beer. Um, as you can see, the uh, came out with just over the targets. And um, yeah, we'll get into that into the brew day footage. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the brew day.
All right, so what we're doing right now is transferring out of the HLT through the water pump and under leading underneath the grains so that the water mixes with the salts first and then eventually pushing all the air up out of the grains, eliminating the search for dough balls because there are practically no dough balls when you underlet, which is the benefit and why everybody does it. Doing about 6.1 gallons today, so from 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. A little bit there. So bringing the water level down to the clip. And we can see it start to rise here into the mash tub. I'll do that right here. Boom. We'll shut off this valve. Now we'll hook the water back up to the HLT. Continue recycling. First, we gotta fill the HLT back up. Target right around 65, 66 is actually the target. Target's uh, 66.7. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and bring the HLT back up in terms of volume, and then uh, bring the temperature to 66.7 there so that we'll start the recirculation. So we're nearing the end of the mash. So let's go ahead and take a look. Pretty good clear work down there. See that that manifold's working quite nicely. Let's go ahead and uh, take a sample. Just really good. Post mash pH. And now it's time to start sparging and filling up the boil kettle. Alright, so we took that wort sample. So here it is, cooled down. It's about 20 degrees Celsius. And coming in about 5.3, which ain't bad. Looks like coming in nice and clear. That'll do it. Nice all the way through sparging. So the sparge water is nice clear on top. About an inch, two inches above the uh, grain bed. Building up the boil kettle. 
computer. Okay, still mashing. Currently you got the four gallons in the boil kettle. You can see I'm over the element now. So it's pretty safe to go ahead and set the uh, boil kettle thermostat at 90 degrees. I want it to uh, come up to 90 and stay at 90. So it only takes a couple minutes to get to a boil once the boil kettle is full. Yeah. So that'll turn on the heat element and bring that wort up to 90 degrees and hold it there as it fills up. All right, so we're at about the 10 gallon mark, filling up the, uh, the boil kettle. Beautiful looking color there for a Hellas. Um, over here on the HLT, you can see we're right at the mark for shutting off the, uh, the water. Make sure it's shut off, not wide open. And uh, yeah, we've got about, let's register in about seven and a half gallons in the mash tun, but of course it's mostly grains. And uh, yeah, there we go, nice and clear. We'll rinse those grains off. Finished bringing that boil kettle up to about 14 gallons, which we're gonna push it right up to the lid today. And uh, definitely gonna need some firm cap S to help us out. We'll get to that in a few minutes. All right, it's getting right up there. Beautiful color. See, we're right at the 14 gallon mark here. I'm gonna go ahead and put in about five drops. Whoa, a little bit more than five drops. It's good, it's about two drops per uh, five liters. So, see, that'll be all right. I'm gonna give it a bit of a stir. Work that in. I want to do collect 14.2 gallons. Yeah, we're about there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut this off. Call that good. Come over here, see we're about 91 degrees on the boil kettle, so I'll go ahead and just hit set for a few seconds until it goes into manual mode. There it's at 78%. I'll kick that up to 100 to get us up to a boil. There we go. 100% manual mode. And it's just to watch this guy. Alright, so I went ahead and took a uh, sample. Go ahead and see what the gravity is before we take the uh, pH. Alright, about 1045, 1044, 1045. We were actually aiming for 1040, I believe. Yeah, 1040, so we're a bit over. Um, Alright, so I'll probably have to water this down a little bit because it's already on the high side of the Hellas. But, uh, there it is, starting to boil. And this is a uh, 90 minute boil. And for this one, we got one hop addition, the Halatau Mentafu, 75.5 grams, going in at the uh, 60 minute mark. So, yeah. So we've got about 30 minutes to go before we add in the first hop job. Okay, so the uh, pre-boil wart pH, 5.36, that should be all right. All right, so trying to fix a uh, high efficiency here. So I'm at 45 minutes into the boil and I've topped it up with about a gallon of water. So now I'm right back up to the 14.2, uh, 14.3 mark. I'm way up there, back up at the lid. So now the water is at 
and I want to end up right around 1050. So if I boil for an hour at this volume, I should get down around to the 1050 mark, uh, or at least just maybe a little bit over, hopefully not too much more over. So what I'm going to do right now is add in the uh, 60 minute hops, call it 60 minutes, and uh, go from there. All right, time for the uh, Warflock and yeast nutrients. Boom. Almost done here. Okay, there we go. Coming out of the bottom of the boil kettle, through the pump, through the counter flow chiller, out into the fermenter. Nice light color. Looking down here. Coming in about 10 degrees, which is where we're going to ferment it at. 10 degrees for the first uh, week at least. And then uh, we may do a little uh, fast logger and method on it after that. All right, so looking at that, look at about 1051 post boil. Too shabby. Coming down, still going into the fermenter. There we go, just taking a look at post boil. Looking at we're about 5.27 pH. Not too shabby. Some color of the beer, still settling out. And in the hydrometer, still settling out there, but it's chilling. 1050, 1051, same as the uh, refractometer. So, pretty happy about that. Looking at the trim is behind. Looking pretty good. Alright, so I did have a fairly large starter, it was about 4 liters, but I uh, dumped out, or crashed it, and dumped out about uh, 3 and a half liters of it. So, got a nice pitch here. The yeast that I'm using is the uh, WLP 838, the Southern German Lager Yeast. I uh, really like this one, did a really great job last time. And, uh, looking forward to, uh, Reproduce the same beer this time. All right, so there it is. There's the fermenter all set up. Got the uh, cable going into a ST1000 up on the top. It's currently registering 10 degrees, and it's set for 10 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and heat, uh, hook up the uh, heater belt on it. Alright, so there you go. That was the brew day. Here's the final product. Uh, looking pretty clear. Uh, it's been settling for a little while. Uh, I showed it on the video. It came out right at 10.51. Uh, the hydrometer matches with what I saw on the refractometer. So all is good. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with the water volumes and I, I was over efficient on my mash. So the increased efficiency sort of led me to having to add more water in after a long period of time during the boil. So it was supposed to be a 90 minute boil. It ended up being uh, probably close to 120 minutes because I had to boil it for 45 minutes first just to lower the volume enough to be able to add in more water to get it to where I wanted it to be for that 60 minute hop addition. And, um, so that I could actually hit my final volumes at my target uh, final gravity of 1050. And I still managed to go just a little bit high at 1051, which is pretty good. I mean, uh, it's right in the ballpark. Last time I brewed this beer, I got it at 1053, so I was even higher than where I wanted to be. Um, so today I felt a little bit uh, better about bringing it down to the uh, 1051, getting it closer to the target at 1050. And uh, yeah, so now it's in the fermenter. Now it's totally up to the to, to the yeast. 
So hopefully uh, it's a second uh, generation, uh, second time I used this yeast. I had it stored for a long time, but I did a big starter, um, and I actually had two slightly out of date uh, fresh yeast packs from uh, White Labs that I added into that. So I'm pretty confident that I have more than enough yeast in order to do it. So um, yeah, so it's doing the job. I got the uh, the fridge and the fermenter all buckled in at 10 degrees Celsius. I'll leave it there for about a week, and then um, I'm going on vacation. And so when I come back in about a week, week and a half, then we'll go ahead and start to ramp that up for a diacetyl rest, or at least finalizing the beer. Um, maybe practice a little bit of that fast lagering technique, where bring it up about uh, a couple degrees. Um, every day until I get to about 16 degrees Celsius and then I'll uh, bring it slowly back down to as close to zero as I can over the course of about a week. I'll go ahead and uh, call it good as long as you know I suspect that we'll be at the final gravity by then. Put it into the keg, give it a week or two to uh, carbonate and uh, lager and then we'll go ahead and put it into that competition. So anyways, that's that's what the brew day was like. Uh, hope you enjoyed watching this video. Thanks for stopping by. Um, take care, everyone. Cheers.